hilarious humorous kind of, uh, speeches. <laughs> but first, I want to ask if anyone used their cell phone during the break. Please make sure you turn it off. I'll put it back in the <laughs> And also, I want to share a very special event with you all. It's going to happen on October 22nd. It's called The Call. The Call. It's Communications and Leadership Lessons. It's going to be at the Morton Grove Library, 515 to 830. Now, we're going to have some great speakers there. Joan K. Moore. Does anybody know Joan? No, yes. never heard of her. Yes. Never yes. heard of her? Yes. Well, you need to go. You need to go check her out. Also, Stan, I can't say Stan's name. I call him Stan P. Piskorski. Piskorski. I call him Santa Claus. He's going to be there also. Yes. And after the event, there's going to be a talent show. Singing, dancing, acting. Do we have any actors here? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. All right, we got one, we got two. They say, they say the whole world is the stage and everybody plays a part, so we all are actors. Okay? And I am an actor, actually. Yes, in the theater. And there's a very thin line between acting and speaking. So, again, October 22nd, the call, communication, and leadership lessons. Now, with that being said, I'd like to call up again. Please welcome our contest Toastmaster and Sonya Gibbs. Insects. 
when she informed her that was an entomologist, he ran over to the cabinet, pulled out a pen and paper, put it down, and said, print it out. Tell me what the letters are. He was the only preschooler that could read and spell entomologist but didn't know the letters <laughs> for dog or cat. <laughs> All during summer camps and throughout most of his schooling, he became known as the bug boy. <laughs> One summer, while people were passing our house, they would see the four of us running around, grabbing crickets, moths, whatever we could collect, running to the side of the house, throwing it up, and just sat and stared. What they didn't see was this big spider web buried in the bushes, <laughs> and a fat spider that we were feeding everything to. <laughs> we made him our outside pet. <laughs> when Dave went to college, he informed us he was going to go to Africa to study camel spiders. When we told our neighbor, she screamed over the phone. And then we heard her husband scream. They were both in the Air Force, and they were deployed in the Middle East, and had seen big Marines with bulletproof vests, the machine guns, and the boots up the ear running from those spiders. <laughs> she couldn't believe anybody would ever want to go anywhere in the world to study these things let alone catch 50 in a week. All of this led David to move to Texas for grad school, where every summer for three years, once a month, he'd go into a national park to collect scorpions and spiders and enjoy a week of camping. And being an Eagle Scout, he thought he was going to be prepared for this. Well, the national park was over 800,000 acres of desert. We don't get to see humans very often. I got a lot of phone calls while he was driving between his tracks, just so he could hear a human voice, even if it was the old man just giving him a few words of encouragement. One of these trips, he caught a big tarantula, made it his pet for the week, just feeding it whatever he caught. He needed something in the car that he could talk to. <laughs> night, they parked between two big boulders to enjoy the sunset and to eat dinner. When suddenly he noticed behind him a border patrol car that pulled up and parked behind him, blocking his way out. Two officers got out of the car and they started walking to him, one on each side. Hey Dave, my partner's never seen a camel spider before. Did they catch any of this trip? They had met several times before in the desert and help change a flat tire. Dave's tracks were these big Tupperware bowls buried in the ground. At one of the sites, as he was lifting it out, he heard a funny noise. It turned out to be a baby rattlesnake. A fellow student who was with him told him to keep it there, like he had much choice. <laughs> and she wanted to run, get her camera, come back from the truck. She got some great pictures, and that's Snake got an extra hour of nap. <laughs> On the last few trips that Dave made into the desert and the park, he took his girlfriend at the time. And together they emptied the traps, hiked a few mountains, walked in the desert, and drank lots of warm water and had no showers. <laughs> I told him she was a keeper. <laughs> That's about the only advice he's ever taken from me. <laughs> They've been married for two years now. <clears throat> from chocolate spaghetti to now over a thousand spiders that Dave is classifying for his thesis. And even naming an unknown species he discovered. This is my son's fun journey to where he is now. Proving we should never deny our kids their dreams. We should support them and encourage them any way we can so that they can reach their goals. Because of Dave, when I see a bug in the house, I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Fatma? Yes. The apple does not fall far far sorry, does not fall far from the tree. She said, okay. So we drove to the store to get some groceries. 
And just then, she remembered, as we were heading to the checkout line, we forgot something. She had to get some body wash down the aisle. So we both walked to the, stick, to the aisle, and I happened to notice a fairly handsome young man stalking the shelves halfway down. And just then, my mom saw what she needed. So she bent down to reach that bar of soap she had to get, and then it happened. The sound that was so great, you would think Gabriel blew his horn. <laughs> My mother, <laughs> right there in the middle of Walmart, the loudest part you've ever heard in your life. How could you do this to me? My life is over. I looked at that boy, and he looked at me and smiled. And I looked at my mom. Mom, how could you do this to me? And then it happened. The worst thing in my life. She turned with the biggest grin and said, Fatima! <laughs> she made it up with me! That was the thing! I was horrified! I ran and jumped in the car, and I thought about leaving her, but I didn't. And she came to the car, and I said, Mom, why do you constantly do this to me? Why do you constantly embarrass me? And she said, you know what? Life is so hard. We make mistakes all the time. You've got to laugh about it. You've got to enjoy life. Everyone's going to have that accident happen. It's how you deal with it. I thought about it a while, and although I didn't forgive her that day, I realized, you know what? She's right. So now that I'm an adult and four kids in, I realize that maybe I am the apple that fell closer to that tree than I would hope. So if you'll all please excuse me, my sons asked me to drive them to the mall. And it was quite a sunny day today. So, <laughs> here we go. <laughs>
Madam Contest Chair, we have all the ballots. Thank <laughs> you. 
I can make one up. And, <laughs> and your dissertation? I, I achieved my ACS at CL, but I'm working on my old CC. All right, wonderful. That is great. I see here that you enjoy swimming, cycling, and you have two children. Of the three, what's your favorite? <laughs> Kids, two kids. I have two kids, two year old and, and five year old. And anybody have uh, that combination? Yeah, you, there are there are many of them, and they know the business in the whole world. My wife is the most busiest lady in the whole world, <laughs> and I, you know, she don't even care about me anymore. You know, she's like, yeah, you can do it, do it. I will, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> This is uh, this is a major uh, transformation that happened, especially with Toastmasters, and that was when I came to America, like in 2007. When I become kind to others, I see that the kindness also returns in multiple ways, and I become more and more kinder, and and I see the world transform. So this is this is kind of my major belief, and I think that as a Toastmaster, we all believe that, don't we? Yes, yeah. kindness is my religion, our religion. Thank you so Thank much. You.
to reading the paper every day to find out what was happening because the game was going on in Iceland, which you know I'm sleeping while the game's on, and I'd have to be late, and I'd have to read it in the paper. There's no such thing as internet. Or <laughs> Technology is only as good as the people that. <laughs>
So with that being said, the contest is adjourned. Woo!